When we reviewed the Street Fighter 2 arcade cabinet, there was a bunch of other models that were also being created. And today, the folks at Arcade 1UP sent in another one of their machines. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Rampage Arcade 1UP cabinet. The last time we looked at an Arcade 1UP cabinet, we checked out the Street Fighter 2 release. We had a lot of positive things to say about the system for a smaller release, and to this day, it has still stood up to everything that we've thrown at it because, folks, we play games pretty hard over here at ReRes, and this machine has stood up to several intense rounds of one-on-one -on -one competitions on Street Fighter. So, of course, when we found out that we were getting an Arcade 1UP version of Rampage, well, we were really, really excited. Because where the previous system featured three versions of Street Fighter 2 that each used the same controls, this one was going to feature four different games that each had completely different control layouts. Could these four vastly different games really work in one cabinet? Well, let's take a look. Just like the previous cabinet that we checked out, you also have to build this one. And again, just like the previous cabinet, we had to remove the front-facing plastic overlay and just clean the underside of the screen a bit because dust seemed to be captured underneath. This really isn't that big of a deal though because it only takes about a minute or two to clean it with some glass cleaner. But even if you chose not to clean it, you likely wouldn't see a problem. Like we mentioned last time, the screen is placed so close up against the overlay that even something like a scratch on the overlay once the screen was turned on would likely not be visible. Visible. Just like the last cabinet, we saw no identifiable signs of any of the stickers peeling or anything like that. Every piece of artwork on here is just as high quality as you would hope it would be. But there are a few minor differences. The original Rampage machine that was released way back in the day was produced by Bally Midway, and that company has gone through a lot of changes up until the point that they really don't exist anymore. While you won't find the Bally logo anywhere on the cabinet, you will find the Midway logo. And on the left and right sides of the cabinet, you'll find the Midway Classic Arcade logo, which is pretty significant considering that this unit right here features four Midway Classic games. Another addition you'll find is the Warner Brothers logo at the bottom left of the controls, and that's because most of Midway's assets were purchased by Warner Brothers. In my opinion though, one of the most noticeable changes between an original Rampage cabinet and this one from Arcade 1UP is that the marquee and screen are better sized. In an original Rampage machine, the screen was just a little bit too small and awkwardly spaced. In the Arcade 1UP version, you'll find that the screen has been centered and resized, and that means that the screen does go over top of some of the original overlay artwork. This really doesn't bother me too much, but if you're a fan of the original Rampage cabinet, you might notice it. But if you are a fan, you'll be happy to learn that the original style arcade controls are replicated here pretty accurately. The cabinet features three arcade joysticks with two sets of buttons for each player. The control panel also features three buttons for player one, two, and three. These really don't do anything when you're playing Rampage specifically other than insert a coin. And above that, you'll find the switches for power and volume. So how do these controls hold up while playing Rampage? Well, in my own personal opinion, I think they hold up pretty well. Just like the original arcade release, depending on which set of controls you stand in front of, that's the character that you're playing as. So through the left you have George, through the center you have Lizzie, and through the right you have Ralph. As far as I can tell, this is the original arcade ROM, meaning that you're not going to be getting some watered-down experience of Rampage. This is exactly how it should play, and exactly how it should feel. It's just as fast and just as precise as the original release. But of course, now we have to talk about the size of the arcade 1UP machine. With the Street Fighter release, it was just two people, and that was very easy to sit beside each other. But with this one with three, it might be a little bit more cramped. And depending on what kind of chairs you're using, you might not have enough room. But one way to solve that is to get an Arcade 1UP riser. When we used the riser, we were capable of standing up in front of the machine and having three people play it at the exact same time. It's definitely a little bit closer than the original arcade experience, but it's still plenty of fun. Overall, I feel if you were just getting this cabinet alone for Rampage, I think you'd have a pretty good time. But to keep in mind, this isn't the only game that's on here, because at the front of the panel, just below where the coin slot would have normally been, you'll see the list of all the four games included in this machine. And the next one we're going to check out is Gauntlet. Gauntlet is an interesting choice because Midway didn't actually produce this game. Originally, it was created by Atari, but throughout the years at some point Midway purchased it, and in turn, now it's owned by Warner Brothers. This game was a smart addition to the Rampage cabinet simply because you didn't need that many buttons to play it originally. All the original cabinet actually had was a fire button and a magic button. So the Rampage controller layout is a perfect match for this game. But unfortunately, you're not getting the four-player version of Gauntlet. Instead, you're getting the two-player release. Now, this is still a very fun game and it is cool to play, but it would have been nice to see the four-player version on here. Even though you would have never been able to actually play with a fourth person, it still would have been nice just to play with three. 
Regardless though, with the version that is on here, it does work, but there are some problems. First off, we noticed some issues when it came to the sound not running exactly the same way, and then there were some slowdown sequences when a lot of sprites would be on the screen. In a game like Gauntlet, when you can count on having tons and tons of sprites on the screen at the exact same time, whenever you run into an issue like this, that means that the game can sometimes be impossible to play properly. Out of all the games that are on this cabinet, this seemed to be the only one that was having these emulation issues. Now, we're not too certain if it's an emulator problem in general or if it's something to do with the ROM, but one thing we did notice was that the ROM has been modified. In the bottom right hand of the screen while you're playing Gauntlet, you should see an Atari copyright. The footage you're seeing right now is a ROM of the original two-player version of Gauntlet that was in arcades. Now, this ROM is running on MAME. To the best of our knowledge, this ROM has not been modified, and you can clearly see the Atari logo in the bottom right. Another way to take a look at this ROM officially is to take a look at the Midway Arcade Origins collection released on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. In this collection, you'll find Gauntlet, and even on that release, you can see the Atari copyright in the bottom corner. The only reason I'm bringing this up is that this is the only time to my knowledge that we've seen this ROM modified in this way. And if it has been modified, that could be a reason why this game isn't running the way it should be. I think a bunch of gamers are going to be fine with the way that Gauntlet performs on this machine, but for fans of the original series that remember how smooth it was, well, they might not really like this release. But things improve greatly by the time you get to the third game in the collection, Joust. Joust is one of those arcade games that's simple to learn but hard to master, and all it really took to play was one arcade stick and one button. So the game feels incredibly at home on the arcade one-up cabinet. As far as I can tell, this is the original arcade ROM running completely perfect. The graphics look great, the gameplay is fast and responsive, and it basically feels just like the original Joust in arcades. The biggest difference I could find from having played the original Joust is that, well, if you played the original arcade system, you probably know that the joystick only moves left and right. Since there are other games on this cabinet that make use of the multi-directional features of the joystick, you might feel that you don't get the same control that you would on original Joust arcade system. But from my own personal experience, it didn't have any impact on me whatsoever. The joystick felt just as responsive as the original, and that's really all you need to play this game well. And maybe the ability to tap that button as fast as you can so you can flap those ostrich wings. And yes, those are ostriches. And finally, we get to the last game on the cabinet, Defender. Now, as far as I can tell, this is the original arcade ROM, and it is being run effortlessly. But that's not the problem I think people are going to have with this game. When you look down at the controls, you're taking a look at the Rampage arcade layout. And when you go to play Defender with this layout, it's going to feel very different. You can see on this screen right here what the controller layout is for this game. Now this looks crazy, but believe it or not, Defender was pretty close to this layout. On the game's original arcade controls, to the far left you would have had an arcade stick that only moved up and down, and directly beside that arcade stick would have been a reverse button. The player would operate both of these inputs with one hand, but directly on the other side of the control layout you have Fire, Thrust, and Smart Bomb. These buttons would have been operated with the player's right hand, and in the dead center you would have had the hyperspace button that would get you out of some pretty tight situations. The Rampage layout isn't completely accurate because it's trying to fit the same controls in for multiple games, so the arcade sticks you have that kind of sit in the center of the playfield there can get in your way. When you're trying to move and hit the hyperspace button as fast as you can, you might accidentally clip an arcade stick and it messes up your game. So the controls have been modified to make it a little bit easier. To the far left, your joystick still operates going up and down, but now the reverse button and the thrust button are on that same location. That means with your thumb, you'll be using thrust or reverse at any given moment. Then to the far right, you have your fire button, and the smart bomb and hyperspace are in the dead center. Personally, I would have liked to have the fire and smart button to the far right, leaving just the hyperspace button in the center, but there's really no option to change the controls here. And that's something I really didn't like about this arcade setup. This is something I think a lot of gamers out there would have preferred. Where Rampage doesn't need it, and maybe the other games don't, I really think that this game specifically could have made use of being able to move the controls around a little bit. With that being said though, the built-in controller layout did work for me. Being able to have the thrust button so close to the arcade stick kind of made it feel a little easier to control the spaceship, but I think there's going to be some gamers out there that will not be able to get around having to move their hands over top of the other arcade sticks. Outside of that though, this is a completely functional version of Defender that I think a lot of gamers out there are going to have a lot of fun with.
And that pretty much wraps up all the four games you're going to be getting in the Rampage Arcade 1-Up cabinet. The only game here that had any significant issues for me was Gauntlet, and if that's the only reason you're picking up this cabinet, I really can't recommend it. For all the other games though, they play great. And just like the last Street Fighter arcade cabinet that we checked out from Arcade 1-Up, it seemed to be using the exact same screen, which had all the benefits of last time, but also brought over the same negative features, including the pixel shimmering that we saw. But fortunately for many of these games, there's very little background scrolling, so you really don't see the pixel shimmering all that much, if at all. In the comments of the last video, multiple people brought up the fact that they could just recreate one of these cabinets with MAME. And while that is true, it's not a licensed version of the game, and that's what makes these cabinets stand out. And from my own personal experience with Pandora's box, well, those machines never work nearly as good as these ones, even when it comes to Gauntlet. And in the past, where I've taken a look at Pandora's box units that were built as an all-in-one device, well, I've gotta say the build quality on the Arcade 1-Up cabinets is a lot better. The printing quality of the artwork alone looks just like the original cabinets and isn't all pixelated like you see on typical knockoff systems. And while again it is true you could build a main cabinet yourself and copy the exact same artwork, this artwork here is actually licensed and is legally allowed to be used on this system, something that you simply won't be able to do with a system you've made at home. But one advantage that a MAME system does have over the arcade 1-up units is that for some reason the high scores didn't seem to save all the time. Now on certain games there was a trick to do it by playing a game, getting a high score, backing out to the main menu, entering back into the game, going back to the main menu, then turning off the system, but that didn't always seem to work. In some instances when we got a really high score, it would just disappear. Our results were completely mixed, and if you're looking to get an arcade 1-up machine and reserve your high scores and have competitions with your friends and family over for a long amount of time, well, I really wouldn't recommend that. If you start up a game and keep playing it all the way through and have a smaller competition that way, that might work. Outside of that though, you can't always rely on the high score saving. While Joust and Defender work great on this machine and are very fun to play, I gotta say that if you're a fan of Rampage, that's the reason to own this machine. It clearly is the standout title, and I think having three friends around a cabinet playing games and destroying cities, well, you couldn't have much more fun than that. I gotta say that I'm a really big fan of these arcade 1-up cabinets because it's just a really cool way to have these games in your home. And I know that maybe for many folks out there, it doesn't capture the exact feeling from the arcades, but I think it's close enough that many people that have never played these before in arcades will get a very similar experience and understand what it was like for many of us growing up playing these arcade games. And because they're pretty easy to get from a lot of retail stores, I think they're a pretty cool thing to buy.